G'day gamers. If you're interested in making a detailed platformer just like this one, within Game Maker, using drag and drop, then keep watching. In previous tutorials, we established the movement and collisions for the player and added the sprites for the walk, jump and idle animations. If you haven't watched those yet, check out those first, the links are in the description. So by now, things are starting to get more complex with our code and also harder to navigate. Keeping track of what the player is doing each step and only running code that relates to the state the player is in, such as on the ground, in the air or walking, can be difficult to manage in GML and even more so in drag and drop. When we look at our anim script, you can see it's getting quite complicated and there are various states where we're checking what the player is doing in order to assign the correct sprite. Now I'm going to show you how to implement state machines, which allow you to have more control over the player. States are just snapshots of what the player, enemy or object can do at that moment. We put the object into a state so we can have more control over what it does while it's in that state. And what are states? Well, states are things like walk, jump, sleep, idle. If we are in one state, we are limited by what actions we can take. So we get more control over what is allowed to happen in each state. So let's create the states we want the player to have. Now we create them as enumerators or enums and enums are just a set of named values. We define the enum with a name and also give each entry a name. In the background, GameMaker converts these names into numbers, but it's easier for us to know them by their name. Now, enums are also global in scope, meaning when you define them, they are defined for every object and any object can use that value. So because they're global, I'm going to create them in the game object. I'm going to add a create event for OGame and I'm going to drag across the execute code script. So this is for our player states. And to define an enum, we type enum and then the name we want to assign to the enum group. Because it's the player states, I'm just going to call it PS and then we do an open brackets, close brackets. So inside we can write the named states. So the first state is idle. And I write them in capitals. The next one is walk with a comma. And the last one we're having is air. Now there's no comma required for the last one. So to refer to these enums, we can just type the name of the enum and then a dot and then the name of the value. So in this case, air, or we could type walk or we could type idle. Now I want to refer to those as the state that we're in. So I want to have a variable called state that we assign the enum that we are in. So let's go and create that variable now. So in our entity, let's create a new variable and it's going to be called state. And the state I want to start in is the idle state. So I'm just going to write ps.idle. And states are always going to be whole numbers. So we can change this to an integer. So we're going to set up the player so that we are in an idle state, we're in a walk state, or we're in an air state. And depending on where the player is, we'll be in the appropriate state and be able to move out of that state depending on what's happening to the player. So let's go to the player step event. Let's create a way to choose which state we are in. So if you type in switch, you'll see there are some switch commands. So I'm going to drag up the switch block. And we're going to look at the value of state. Now this starts a switch statement and a switch statement basically chooses between some options. We'll have three options here and the switch statement will look at this variable and whichever one it matches, it will choose and run the code under that case. So let's add a case. And our first one's going to be for our idle state. So if state equals PS dot idle, then we'll run what we want to happen when we're in the idle state. Let's add another one. And this is going to be PS dot walk. And we'll run the code for our walk state. And the last one we want to have is PS dot air. And we'll run our air code there or what happens when we're in the air. So to start with, I'm going to select all our existing code and do a cut. 
and let's paste it under each one. So there's our idle. Right click, paste, and there's our walk, and there's our air. So it's handy, you can see what, what's happening over here or what the code is for each one over here. So like we said, we can do certain things when we're in each state. We might not need to do everything here in each state. If we go down and look at the air state, we don't need to check jumping because we're already in the air, we're already jumped. So we can remove that one. We don't need to check jumping there. But we do need a way to move between each state. And we don't have a way to do that yet. So let's make a new script. And I'm going to call it check state. So in here we want to check which state we should move to. So let's do a test first and say if we're on the ground, if that is equal to true. So if we're on the ground we need to work out if we want to be in the idle or the walk state. So let's do another test here and say is our HSP equal to zero? If it is, then we want to go to, we want to change the variable of state and change it to ps dot idle because our HSP is zero. Else we want to go to the walk state. So state will equal PS dot walk. Now if we're not on the ground, we need an else here and we need to assign state to be PS dot air. Now this will help us to move between the states. So let's put that in, go back to the player, and the check state, let's put that in for each of the states. So I'm going to click on check ground, copy and paste, and we've got two check grounds. So let's just open that up and we'll change one of them to check state and do the same thing down here. Check ground, copy, paste, open up the second one and change it to check state. And then this one, check ground, copy, paste, open it up and check state. So that gives us the ability to now move between the states. Now let's have a look at our anim script. There's quite a lot happening in here. Let's simplify this a little bit. Let's grab our switch statement again. And we want to look at the value of state. Let's put some cases in. We're going to put a case in for ps.idle. And we also want to have one for ps.walk. And then lastly, ps.air. Now, if we're in the idle state, then we just want to show the idle animation. So let's just set the instance variable of the sprite to SPR idle. If we're in the walk, let's set it to SPR walk. And if we're in the air, we do need to make sure we assign the right one. We need to go all the way down and we'll take these because that assigns the appropriate one. I'm going to cut those out and paste them under the air state. So we don't need these anymore. Get rid of all of that. And that really simplifies our code. Now there was one more thing to do and that's just make sure we're facing the right direction when we move. So I'm going to create another script and I'm going to call it check facing. And we talked about doing this in the last lecture so I'm just going to set it up now. So what we want to do firstly is say if our HSP is not equal to zero, then we want to ask, is our HSP greater than zero? And if it is greater than zero, then facing is assigned a value of one. Else, facing is assigned a value of minus one. So I've done this before, it's just I'm setting it up again by putting it in a script, but we have done this in previous lectures already. So we're just using that to determine which way our sprite is going to be facing. So now that we have a script, let's go back into the anim script and then we can run it here.
So we'll just check facing there and we'll also copy and paste it and check it here. You can place it here too if you like and that just means that when you're jumping you'll get the facing direction changing as well. It's up to you which one you want to do. So let's run that. And now our player moves around and in the air also we get the moving direction. So it's up to you which way you prefer. But everything runs as it did before, except now we just have more control over what's happening. When we're in the idle state, we actually know the code that's running. When we're in the walk state, we know what's running then. So we can adjust our code and change things a lot easier. And you'll see in upcoming tutorials, it makes it much easier to control things. So before I go, I just wanted to mention my course is over 90% off at the moment. There's a coupon code in the description. If you want to learn more about GameMaker and specifically GML, and how to build a tile based platformer then go and check that out it's a really good course getting a lot of good feedback and it's actually the highest rated game maker course on udemy so thanks for joining me i look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial